Damien, the director, was keen on trying to keep everything matching the way that was shot on film. He didn't want any shots to stand out or any, any shots to be an obvious visual effect shot. Uh, so we came up with uh, various different tools that we could use on the footage and on our CG to blend the two together so that they, they matched seamlessly and didn't stand out. For the LED screen itself, it was 180 degrees around the gimbal on the soundstage. And because it's 180 degrees, it's quite a wide field of view. So we ended up rendering a 360 degree image, a, a spherical image. So that it covers the 180 degrees and also allowed the filmmakers on the day to rotate around the image if they needed to, depending on what they were shooting. We rendered approximately 90 minutes of footage. This included the uh, 360 renders that we did for each of the sequences. We also rendered a front view, side view, left, right, and then a rear view for each of them, just in case they wanted to have a, a slightly higher resolution version for any close-ups that they were shooting. For the section where they descend down to the lunar surface, uh, all the interior shots that they shot, it's got our LED content running in the background. And this was great because you got the full reflection of the moon in their helmets, passing over them as, as they move across the surface of the moon, which you could get if you shot it green screen, but it'd be a lot of extra work and it just wouldn't look, wouldn't look as realistic. Trying to capture everything in camera was, uh, was the main goal of this movie, and I think doing it with the LED screens is the only way to do that. For the lunar section of the movie, towards the end, we created three different moons, one for the wider views, the approach to the moon and the orbit, another one for the descent where we actually go down and, and land on the moon, and then another custom one for when we blast it off from the moon back up to the uh, command and service module. And then what Damien wanted to do for when they come out of the, the uh, landing module for the first time and we see, see the moon for the first time, that's when we switched to the IMAX footage. So all the, the, the footage that was shot on the surface of the moon, that was shot on IMAX. Everything inside was shot 16 mil. So there's a shot we've got just after they touch down, where they open up the door with 16 mil, and we come out through the door, and then we actually expand out uh, top and bottom to the full IMAX, which looks quite striking when you see it. You know, your field of view suddenly gets much wider and it makes the moon feel pretty immense. The moon area that they chose was a quarry area just outside Atlanta. They landscaped an area to make it feel like the moon and then they set dressed, placed rocks around the scene and, and various craters throughout the environment so they could get most of that in camera, which is the main goal. Once it had been shot, we then had to remove some of the soil mounds to make it feel obviously like the moon. It just keeps going and going. We also had to top up some of the lighting so the light was really powerful on the day it wasn't quite powerful enough that we, did, we couldn't see a visible pool of light. So we had to extend that light round so you never really saw where it uh, began or ended. The thing that stands out the most for me on First Man was getting the content ready for these LED screens. It was really good to see the shots when they came back as, as scans, how it all fit together nicely, how nicely all the reflections worked. Uh, it just worked in camera, which was, which was the main goal of doing this.